Hello, my name is Kunal, and with my teammates Kate and Christine, we have made a chessboard and chess pieces. In this video, we will detail the processes used to make our chessboard and chess pieces. The king piece was also made by sketching out one side of the piece using the line and spline functions, then rotating the sketch around the central axis. The fillet function was used to make the rigid edges smoother. Then, in order to create a 2D cross, I first made a plane adjacent to the cross, then created an offset plane from the initial plane. I used the sketch rectangle from two points function to sketch a rectangle onto the offset plane, then used the extrude function to cut a side of the cross out. Then, I used the mirror function to repeat the same to the other side. The queen was also created by rotating a half sketch around the y axis. In the case of the queen, this sketch was made by using the spline, line, and conic curve functions, and then the shape was then filleted. For the knight chest piece, I started with the base. For the base, I used a model of the base of the pawn piece as an outline for the sketch, and then I used the revolve function to create a 3D solid piece out of that. For the transition piece between the head and the base, I used the loft function to create a smooth transition between the circular top of the base and the rectangular bottom of the knight's head. For the knight's head, I outlined um, a picture of a knight's head and this knight chest piece, and then used the extrude function to create a 3D piece out of that. Then I use the fillet function to make all of the edges smooth. Uh, the bishop was created by, again, rotating the half sketch around the central axis. The cut on the head of the piece was made by first creating a plane at an angle, and then creating an offset plane from the initial plane. Then a rectangle was sketched and extruded from the offset plane to make the cut. The rook was created like the other pieces. However, the main difference was in the creation of the windows of the rook. These windows were made by first creating a plane in the xy axis and then extending or extruding to cut into the rook. Then the pattern, circular pattern tool was used to copy this pattern symmetrically around the rook. The board was made by first finding a black and white picture of a chessboard. I surrounded this by a black square of dimensions 20 by 20 with a line thickness of 0 0.001. In laser cutting, dark colors signal etching and a line of 0 0.001 thickness or lower signals cutting. In order to make the board unique, we decided to add blue devils to the board. So blue devils were added into some of the white boxes. They were not added to all of the white boxes to prevent the board from looking cluttered, so it would still be easy to differentiate white from black on the completed chessboard. One big issue we faced while making the board was that the acrylic was not completely flat while laid down, and therefore the laser cutter did not completely cut through the top right section of the board. This caused a big problem when we removed the board, as it ended up breaking when I took it out of the laser cutter. To mend our board, we used hot glue. In order to fix this problem in the future, I would specify for the laser cutter to cut slightly deeper by default, in order to give some leeway room. Creating any object on Fusion 360 is most efficiently done when starting with the sketch and then creating solid objects from the sketch. For example, for the pawn, I started with this sketch before revolving it into a solid shape, rotating it, and then scaling it to the appropriate size. In addition, it is helpful to start bottom up since the bottom or the base must support the top of the chess piece for it to sit accurately like a chess piece. Some features that are difficult to render are if the chess piece has small fine details such as the grooves and edges in, a knight's head, in the knight's head or um, edges in the king's shape. These can be more difficult because they require more attention to detail and smaller lines when sketching them. In addition, pieces with multiple components such as the head, the transition, and the base can be difficult because all the components must be aligned in the appropriate x, y, and z axes for them to be printed accurately. The piece should be placed upright and on the base for the best chance of a successful first print. 
We witnessed members of a different team struggling to take off the supports from the side of their piece because they had oriented the piece on its side. Because the bottom of the chess piece is flat and the other edges are round, orienting the chess piece upright will minimize the amount of supports needed. Printing a chess piece is similar to building layers of a cake. If the bottom layer is larger than the upper layer, no additional supports are needed. However, if the upper layers are larger than the bottom layer, support is required because the cake layers cannot be created on air. Similarly, since a chess piece prints from bottom to the top, pieces that have larger upper layers that protrude above the bottom layers require support. One of the problems we faced was the support plastic getting stuck in small grooves of our chess pieces. For example, our first king piece had an indent of around 2mm for aesthetics purposes, but the frame of the structure got stuck inside of the rigid groove. In order to solve this problem, we made smoother, larger grooves in our pieces.